question number 29. It is very similar to question number 28 but with just variables. So the arithmetic mean and geometric mean respectively between two positive numbers are capital A and capital G. So you have the arithmetic mean to be capital A and the geometric mean of the two numbers to be capital G. The two numbers are A and B. You have to prove that the two numbers are A plus or minus root of A plus G times A minus G. So you need to prove that A value and B value on the A plus or minus root of A plus G into A minus G in a proof on Okay. So when you have A plus B and AB, you have to use the trick. So before that, I'll just simplify this. So I have A plus B equal to 2A, AB equal to G square, squaring on both sides. So what is the trick? A minus B the whole square equals A plus B the whole square minus 4AB. So when I substitute, I have 2A the whole square, which is 4A square. Minus, what is my 4AB? 4G square. When I take the 4 outside, I have A plus G times A minus G. A square minus B square. So it becomes A plus G, A minus G. This is my A minus B, the whole square. So what is my A minus B? It is the root of this. So the 2 comes out. Root of A plus G, A minus G. Okay, so this is my A minus B. What is my A plus B? It is 2A, 2 capital A. So when I add these two, what do I have? The B goes off. I have 2A equals 2A plus 2 root A plus G times A minus G. 2 common or the 2 goes off. So what am I left with? I'm left with A equals A plus root of A plus G times A minus G. So one of the numbers can So A equals A plus root of A plus G A minus G. So one number can put such in or number A minus root of A plus G A minus G in a proof on. So, substituting the value of A in this equation, what do I get? B equals 2A minus A, which is 2A minus A plus root of A plus G times A minus G. So, what do I have when I open the bracket? It's 2A minus A, which is A. Minus into plus is a minus root of A plus G times A minus G. That's it. So this is your B. Your A is A plus root of A plus G into A minus G. Your B is A minus root of A plus G into A minus G. So hence proved. Okay. So this is your value of A and B. So we have the number of bacteria in a certain culture doubles every hour. So if there were 30 bacteria present in the culture originally. So first in the the bacteria is going to double every hour. So first hour la 2 in the second hour it will become 4. Third hour it will become 8 and so on. And there were 30 bacteria present in the culture originally. So A equals 30. How many bacteria will be present at the end of second hour? First, there were 30 bacteria and in the first hour, it doubled. 60. So, what does that mean? In the first hour, it is not A1, it is A2. A1, it was how much bacteria was present originally. First hour, it becomes 60, which is A2. It is not A1, which means they are asking you to find how many bacteria will be present at the end of second hour? At the end of second hour, it won't be A2, but it will be A3. Correct? First, A1, how many bacteria were present originally? A2, first hour, 
A3 na second hour le evlo aache and so on. Fourth hour la what will it be? A5. Nth hour what will it be? An plus 1. You see second hour la 3, fourth hour la 5, apa nth hour la n plus 1. Okay. So what is the formula? AR square, AR to the power 4, AR to the power n. So you know the values of A and R. You can simply just substitute them. So n over 30 times 2 square. So my A3 is 30 times 2 square which is 120. My A5 is 30 times 2 to the power 4 which is 480. What is my ARN? It is just 30 times 2 to the power n. Okay. Question number 31. Your initial amount is 500. What will happen in 10 years? Which means n equals 10. After its deposit in the bank, which pays annual interest rate of 10% compounded annually. You have 10% that gets compounded annually. So basically, in the first year, you will have 500, the amount that you put, plus what do you have? 10% of the amount that you put will get added. Correct? So what will you get? You will get 500 common at the 1 plus 1 by 10. So what is 1 by 10? 0 0.1. So what do I have? 500 times 1.1. So this is what I will be getting in my first year. What will I get in my second year? My second year it will be 500 times 1.1 whatever you had in your first year times 1 by 1 plus 10 the interest rate the amount plus the interest rate you understand that so basically in the first year you deposit an amount of 500 in the end of first year you will be your interest will be compounded annually with an interest rate of 10 percent if you add 500 common, I have 1 plus 1 by 10. 1 by 10 is 0 0.1. 1 plus 0 0.1 is 1.1. Okay. So this is what you have in the end of your first year. But that is the original amount. So to this original amount, in the end of second year, what will happen? This is your original amount now. To the original amount, 10% interest will be compounded annually. You understand? To the original amount, To the original amount, you will be getting some interest of 1.1 times 10 by 100. Which is basically, when you take 500 outside, I have 500 times 1.1 which is taken outside. 1 plus 1 by 10. Which is again 500 times 1.1 times 1.1. You understand? You have to take the amount that you get at the end of every year and to that you your interest gets added right so what will you have have in the end of nth year so it will be 500 times 1.1 to the power n for the first year you have 1.1 for the second year you have 1.1 times 1.1 for the nth year you'll have 1.1 to the power n so in the end of 10 years what will my value be? 500 times 1.1 to the power 10. Okay, that's your answer. Question number 32, last and final question of the exercise. If AM and GM of the roots of quadratic equations are 8 and 5. So you have the AM to be 8, the GM to be 5. They are the roots of the quadratic equation. Okay. Then obtain the quadratic equation. If they are the roots. So what is am? a plus b divided by 2 equals 8. Root ab equals 5. So I have a plus b equals 16. And I have ab equals 
25. How can you create a quadratic equation? What is the general form? x square plus x times sum of the roots plus product of the roots. Do you remember this? So basically your a and b are your roots. a and b are your roots and you have the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. Right? So it is of the form x square plus x times alpha plus beta plus alpha beta equals 0. This is the general form of an equation. So you already have a plus b and ab. So x square plus 16x plus 25 equals 0. That's your equation. Okay. Thank you so much for watching Math and Me with me Nikhila Shankar. Uh, this is the exercise. Do subscribe. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below. Okay? All the best. Bye.